Welcome everybody, welcome to my channel, The Financial Trader's Mindset. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I form concentrated liquidity pools with meme coins. Now, meme coins are a lot different. You have to manage your risk and you have to be really cognizant of, of the risk, right? It could go to zero, you know, and, and you could lose all your money, right? So you, but the benefit is that the reward is a lot higher through price and through the possibility of generating some yield on them, right? You can see yields in the five figure percentages, you know, 10,000%, 20,000%, 30,000% or even higher. <clears throat> now, the approach with it is, uh, is a little bit different. We tend to think, okay, well, the meme coins usually last only for a short period of time. Maybe I'll set up my ranges super tight so I can generate the highest amount of yields as possible and get out and run with the money, right? Well, yes, that might be true, but you have to, you have to have options, a plan A and plan B of how you're going to profit and, and attack a meme coin from separate perspectives, right? First, you have the yield of the concentrated liquidity pool. Yes, that's great. But also, set it up to where you also benefit from price appreciation. All right. So it's kind of like a balance between yield and price appreciation. Not only that, when you, uh, when you go wider, this, this requires you to go wider. So, uh, not only will you benefit from the price appreciation, but you also mitigate risk. <clears throat> Since you're wider, if price draws down, you buy less of the asset at a slower pace compared to a tight range pool where you would buy it too quickly and too much, maybe at too high of a price. Those risks have to be considered. Now here, uh, I'm just showing the kind of the ranges. I'm just going to kind of gloss over it here. But here, this green arrow shows when I got in this, this green, these green trend lines here to show the first range. This is the first range and it's denominated in Seoul. As you see, the candles move up. This is actually price, the USD price dipping, right? But <clears throat> kind of showing you, this is this is where I got in. I set it up with 10 soul, 100% 100 in soul in Solana. It was a just below, the top of the range was just below price, which means that I wasn't in range. <clears throat> so this was essentially the top of the range. Over here is the bottom of the range. As price drifted into my range, I'm buying Retardia, I'm converting my soul into Retardia and earning yields on top of it. Price dropped about 67%, but at the max, I think it was down about 45, not even 50%. So not only did I benefit from buying Retardia at a lower price, but I also didn't take the full drawdown. Right. I, I, I shielded myself by using a Solana heavy liquidity pool and also generated yields on top of that, which I generated. Let me pull it up here. Uh, a 15% yield overnight. So that's a bonus. Now, when price got down there, I set up my second liquidity pool. It's this is these yellow lines. You can see the second yellow line down here, which means it was like near kind of near the top of the, of the, of the of where price went for that day. I didn't know it at the time. I didn't know where price was going. But price was below my bottom of the range. And the reason why I did this is that I, I set it up to be a little bit wider so that if price were to pump, I would sell less of it on the way up than what I was buying on the way down. So that difference allows me to profit. I didn't know where price was going to go, obviously. Nobody does. But I wanted to leave room to the upside just in case price pumped. I wanted to benefit from that price appreciation and also generate yields in the meantime. Now, you might think, OK, well, if you're going to go wide, if you're going to go so wide, you're going to lose out on those nice, juicy yields. Maybe, maybe some of them. Right. But you have to consider also the price appreciation and also that yield is an APR, which is an annual percentage rate. That's over the course of a year. There's no way I'm going to be in this. Well, you never know. But most likely, I will not be in this liquidity pool 
for more than a couple of days, right? So the amount of yield, 20,000% compared to 10,000% is not going to matter to me. What I'm more concerned about is how can I capture some of this move or most of this move uh, through price appreciation, right? So it's a balance. It's, it's different perspectives at the market instead of just being, uh, you know, just having a one, you know, just one approach. You give yourself options to be able to generate yield, right? If price were to just kind of hang around here for, say, a couple of weeks with high volume, oh, that'd be great. I'll just generate yields while I wait. And then at a 10,000, 11,000% APR, you know, I'll ROI, I'll, I will ROI on my position in a very short period of time anyways. And I still have the option of benefiting if price were to pump. So, but what happened here was that price pumped, which I'm kind of sad about. I wish I would have, I wish it would have lasted another day because I was, I generated a 15% return on my, on my position in a day, in like not even a day. It was like, I think 10 to 12 hours, which is crazy, right? I was like, man, give me a couple more days of that. I'll be happy. But anyways, price began to pump, obviously, next day. And uh, I was in this, I was in this range where it, it's depicted in yellow. That was, this is one, this was my upper range. It's my lower range. Price got into here and I was generating a ton of yield. In this, in this case right here, in this post right here, I say, you can see I'm nearly all the liquidity in all the liquidity in this liquidity pool. So I'm getting all the fees simply because I had to initiate the liquidity pool. I had to set it up and on radium and initiate it and get it spun up. Right. Nobody had staked any of this yet. Right. So I was the first pretty much first one to do a concentrated liquidity pool on this on this pair. So I set it up. Uh, I was generating, you know, generating some nice yields. You can even see here the 24 hour pool fee. $225, right? So over the course of, of 24 hours, I was making $225 on an initial investment of about $1,500. It was 10, 10 sole at the time, probably like 150, 155, right? So <clears throat> that, get, that shows you an idea of how much I was earning per day, which you can see where I was hoping that the price would kind of just range sideways for at least a couple of days and I could generate all those high and those, those nice yields, right? But it didn't do that. It decided to pump. So here we go. Retardia had a nice pump, started pumping up. <clears throat> Here's an update on the liquidity pool. Now the position is 1855. The LP is worth 1855. I'm at $50, right? And this is this is at one uh this is at 140 p.m. Literally like 30 minutes later. I made $50 30 minutes later. Let's just do the math on that. That's a 3% return, right? In 30 minutes. Let's extrapolate that to 24 hours, right? <clears throat> That's $2,400 a day in yields. And then per year, that's if, if, if everything would stay the same for a year, that's how much I would earn, $876,000 off of a $1,500 investment. So my ATR, APR was about 58,000% in that moment, right? So, uh, and then we move on here. I took profits at this time when it got to 1,900 and then I rearranged my LP. So what I did was I, I took, I was at 1900, which means I was $400 in profit in the LP appreciation from price pumping. See, I benefited from that. And also I earned 50 bucks here, uh, about 200 bucks, 225, what was it? $225, uh, in the, in the previous LP. So I'm getting close to 300 plus 400, almost $700 in profit right now, right? On a $1,500 investment, already a 50% return. Hasn't even been 24 hours yet. So what I did was, all I did was pull out the, Sol the Solana that was converted from Retardia. See, as price goes up, it's converting into Solana. So what I did, I just, I just pulled all the Solana and the, pro and the yield, and I took this 1.9 million of Retardia, and I staked it into a new range. So I should have it here, new LP, new LP right here. 
<clears throat> were $1,200. So I took $700 out and I set up a new liquidity pool. As you can see, there's no salon in here. I pulled it out simply because price was pumping. I didn't want price to retrace back into my range and convert the Solana back into Retardia, right? So I'm just taking profit, taking profit, right? As, as it's getting converted. And it's good practice to take profit on the way up, right? Especially with meme coins. I wasn't concerned if price were, di were, were to dip back below, I wouldn't earn any fees, but also am mitigating my risk as well, right? I, I didn't want to take on risk, especially after having a nice 50% profit. Got to lock it in. So price is now oscillating in that range and it starts to continue to pump. And it drew down here further. It actually did draw down. I didn't earn any fees. And you can see my my liquidity pool went from a $1,200 value to 875. You can see how quickly this happens. And this happened within an hour, right? Dropping, you know, uh, about 30, 30% ish in an hour, right? That's that's why you got to take profits. But anyways, so I'm like, OK, I got to I got to rearrange this. I try to rearrange. Um, it, this was this was it was showing me that li the liquidity pool price wasn't moving. I think I since I was all the pool liquidity. Oh, yeah. If you see here, all the pool liquidity, it shows you right here in the screenshot. I am the liquidity. Eight hundred seventy five dollars in my liquidity pool. There's eight hundred ninety six total liquidity. So. Someone has like 20 bucks in there, right? <laughs> that's it. It was just me and probably one other guy in there. So that's why price didn't move because there's no liquidity for, for orders to, to flow through it. So all the orders were flowing through the other. It was a V, it was a full range soul retardia liquidity pool. That was the other, that was the other liquidity pool. That was the one that was probably minted by, by the team, right? So here you go. I have. This liquidity pool going. So I'm like, okay, I can't go lower because price is not moving. And I was getting like uh, some warning saying price is like 20% away from the current price, right? And all this, right? So I just went ahead and staked it, right? I staked this 875. And then we get this move, right? Explodes higher. I'm like, wow, here we go. Going ballistic. And within, what was that? From 2.34 p.m., to 432. So like in two hours, I was I'm already at $134 in yield on this position. And my position value is $2,106 within two hours. $134 in yield. That's $67 per hour, which comes out to a $1,600, $1,608 per 24 hours if volume stayed like this, right? Times three six five. There you go. That's how much I would make per year, right? But but see, this is a high yield, right? And then uh, let's just see what the percentage on like a thirty nine thousand percent APR. Even though I was much wider, and I actually I wasn't as wide as I should have been. I should have even been wider, right? Especially with this kind of yield, and me being like pretty much the only liquidity, right? So um, I could have probably benefited more. From price appreciation as you can see it went from a low the value of my liquidity pool went from a low of like what 875 to 2106 if you were in a very tight liquidity pool yes you may have gotten like an 80,000 100,000 percent apr but over the course of an hour here let's do the math right i was doing a 39,000 percent apr but at let's say like a hundred thousand percent apr Is that right? No. Right there. Divide by 365. Divide by 34. So that's $171 an hour, right? At 100,000% APR. Now I'm just showing you what if you were to tighten up your range has got 100,000% APR compared to what I was doing with a 39,000% APR. I was earning like a like $67 per hour, whereas someone with 100,000% APR is earning $171 per hour. Yes, they're earning more in yield, but in two hours, price then pumped. Now, say you earned the yield 
for two hours, right? Over here, you would have earned your yield would be at 342 compared to mine at 134. Okay, yes, you beat me in yield, but as price pumped, you sold off a huge, a larger chunk of your retardia back into Seoul, and you didn't take part in a lot of the price appreciation. So where I win is here in my in the liquidity pool value, two thousand one hundred six dollars from eight seventy five. You may have sold too much too early if you were very tight, and say maybe your liquidity pool would have only been worth like. Eleven, twelve hundred dollars, maybe fifteen hundred dollars, right? So that difference, that's that's the idea, you know, playing kind of both sides of the game here, right? Earning yields, but also having the contingency plan to to benefit from a price appreciation explosion, right? So then here we go. Before I ramble on, uh, show you the rest of the update. So here uh, another update. Yields at 161, price is 2221, and price was just going ballistic. And then here we go again, 188 in yield, 2235. And then here we go again. Uh, I think here I took profit. I, okay, I, I posted the screenshot. At this point, my position was worth $2,528, and I had pending yield of 228 plus the previous like $250, $270 worth the yield. So I'm like at like $500 in yield, right? Plus the 2528 right here from the $1,200 of liquidity that I staked after pulling profits, right? So that's a $1,300 profit from here. $1,300 plus the original uh, $1,500 that appreciated to $1,900. That's an extra $400. So that's $1,700 plus the $500. So over two grand in yield, right? More, I made over a hundred percent, right? Let's say, let's say 2300 ish divided by 1500, <clears throat> 153% return in a day. And most of that was through the price appreciation of retardia. Yes, high yields is cool and all, but as you can see here, you can really benefit if you plan out and have a do a balance between the two, right? So that's the idea. And that's it. You know, I close it out. Uh, that's the liquidity pool, but it's very important to, to consider having wider ranges when farming meme coins. So if you want to learn more about this, if you got questions, if you want to ask me more about this, join my Discord. It's free to join. You know, just go in there, ask some questions. I'm happy to help or somebody in the Discord will be happy to help. And, uh, you know, if you're looking to take your concentrated liquidity efforts seriously and really benefit from profiting in this market, I got a course on it. I also have a portfolio tracker that's currently uh, able to track Uniswap concentrated liquidity. And we're working on an aerodrome uh, tracker as well. That would all be consolidated into one. It's called Jeb Tracker. Uh, right there. Little bright. But you can see here. <clears throat> it will show you. All the data you need. And look how quick it pulls that up. It's amazing, right? It shows you could filter by dates, right? Do that. Fil filter by chain. Uh, filter by the LP. Right? And then we're working on some other things where we want to add more metrics to this, but see, you could see your total gain. You could see how much on average you're staking, <clears throat> your PL, how much yield you've earned here, <clears throat> average amount of yield. Uh, and then most importantly, my favorite part is the performance versus HODL metrics here. How are you performing versus a HODLer? It's very important as well. So anyways, if you're interested, Click the links below. Join our community. We'll be happy to help. All right. Well, I hope you had a, I hope this was helpful, resourceful, um, real live trade for you. I don't think anybody else does that in the space. No one shows their real PL in real <clears throat> in real time, right? So, but I feel like there's a lot of smoke and mirrors in the space. 
Um, not many people, I don't know anyone, especially in concentrated liquidity that shows their P&L. It, it is a very difficult concept to understand and to learn. And I feel that a lot of people get discouraged early on trying to figure this stuff out, right? So I, I want to make it clear that, yes, it's very possible to be profitable with concentrated liquidity. You know, people talk about toxic flow, arbitrage, all this crap, right? And and what they're not realizing is it's not any external force that's preventing you from profiting. It's your process or your knowledge in how to manage your liquidity pools and generate yields while also minimizing permanent loss and, and really set up a plan and strategy that fits you so you can be profitable, right? So... I uh, just want to put that out there, man, because it's very important. You know, this this is very possible to be profitable. But anyways, till next time, look at that. Is that price pumping right now? <laughs> price is pumping. I still have some retardia, so uh, I just got it in spot right now. But anyways, uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Uh, I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.